Hello, and welcome to the IoT Leaders Podcast with me, your host, Nick Earl, the CEO of SI. Now, in this week's episode, uh, we have a very lively episode with a very interesting lady who's uh, Greek, and she's called Nasia Skoulikiriti. And um, that name, actually, you'll, you'll, you'll find features in the first part of uh, the podcast when we talk about the uh, difficulties in uh, pronouncing that. Uh, she's a very, very nice lady and talks about what, how she got into IoT. She's actually involved in three separate companies all around giving advice to different people in the um, IoT ecosystem of what's um, uh, needed to make IoT success. And I think we get pretty uh, practical pretty quickly in terms of uh, three big issues, um, roaming and what's needed um, uh, to truly make it work for people. Uh, which is, and all these areas are areas that she gives consulting on, roaming, uh, hardware, and why it really is important in IoT and what you need to do about it. And then the third one, which sort of puts a bow around everything, which is how you need a partner that understands these issues to be able to take you on the journey uh, from uh, where you are to a successful um, implementation. So um, uh, Nasia is very, very active in the IT ecosystem, as you'll hear, been doing this for many, many years and understands it uh, really well. And uh, I think there's so many issues in IoT that she is probably going to be very busy uh, going forward. And um, a, a little uh, spoiler alert, uh, we also have a bizarre conversation about a virtual cat uh, in this um, which um, makes an appearance uh, in the podcast in, in a very strange way, I have to say. So with all of that, um, I hope you enjoy this. And let me hand you over to uh, my podcast with Nasia. Welcome to the IoT Leaders Podcast. Happy to be here, Nick. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Well, you know, when I, 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 I uh, saw you uh, on the guest list and wanted to talk to you for things that we're about to get into, but the first challenge I had was your name. So I'm going to really go out on a limb and I'm going to say that my guest this week is Nasia Skulikariti. Now, how did I do? You did very good. And actually, you used the perfect Greek pronunciation because okay. um, many of you would uh, guess that uh, Skulikariti is a Greek name, very Greek name. Uh, yeah. However, uh, people struggle. Uh, and I have been struggling for, for a long time to pronounce my name. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'll tell you a funny story, Nick, if I may. Sure, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one of my uh, former VPs in a previous life when I was working for Colt many years ago, he was trying to figure out a way to remember my name. And when you pronounce my name with an English accent, it sounds like skulikarate or skulikarete. So uh, he thought that if he came up with, if you think of school of karate and you push it put it all together you come up with school of karate it's very close to nasia's name nasia school of karate so, so, so um, it's, uh, um you know what the problem you told me that is like i can never get that out of my head now so you now, it's, you, it's something that i've used ever since as well because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm you know you did perfect to say my okay, name well, with its proper pronunciation right through, uh, <laughs> now unfortunately it's all gone because all i can think of is that you run a school of karate but but anyway listen um you don't run a school of karate no. um, but you are involved. not yet <laughs> not yet well well i was going to say not yet because you're involved in a lot of stuff so it wouldn't put yes. it wouldn't i wouldn't put it past you to be involved in this but you know yeah um when i was looking at your your, your cv and your linkedin um there's three separate companies that are yeah. all around iot that, mm -hmm. uh, that really led to us uh having this conversation today there was a founder and CEO of a company called Apiro Data, mm -hmm. an IoT director for the Mobile Ecosystem Forum, which is an industry mm -hmm. body, and then the VP of IoT at Global Telco Consult. Yes. So that's three, all, all connected with IoT, but mm -hmm. three very different things. So maybe just to get us going, could you sort of unpack those a little bit for our uh, listeners and, and viewers, just so that we can actually see all the different areas of IoT that you're involved. Certainly, certainly. So I, I have what I call a portfolio career in many ways. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with me being a Gemini and liking variety, but uh, um, so I'll take one 
element and we can get into it. Yeah. Um, uh, Apero Data, which is a company which has started about a bit over three years ago with the aim to make IoT services and solutions easier to deploy and monetize and concentrating on the telcos field, the telcos particularly. And that's because I come for many, many years being in telco. Uh, you know, 27 years ago, I started in the telcos and, and the rest is history. I'm not going to bore you with uh, the stories there yet. Maybe yeah. that will be a different <laughs> post pod uh, podcast altogether. <laughs> so uh, that's up your data. Then uh, this year I've been involved with MEF Mobile Ecosystem Forum. I am uh, heading the IoT uh, section. And that means that because uh, MEF is a non for profit association for the mobile ecosystem and historically they've been doing a lot around the messaging and sms and rcs but they also have an area for the internet of things and that's what i took over to manage and that involves um, doing things such as running um, the monthly working groups for the members where we discuss different areas and challenges that they're facing around iot uh, doing webinars specific to IoT and events. We're actually going to have an event coming in July uh, for digital transformation. And the first day will be all things IoT. So this is what I do for, um, uh, for MEF. And I'm also involved, as you very well mentioned, with uh, GTC or Global Telco Consult. They're very well known in the industry for making messaging in the telco easy and uh, and and for people to be able to deploy messaging services so um recently they decided to add the iot element and layers a new pillar to the services that they offer under consultancy and that's where i come into uh, the picture i am uh, setting up that pillar for GTC, that means, you know, all things consultancy on the operational side, uh, the products, the working uh, flows and, 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 and everything that's involved around that. So just for clarity, when you say they get involved in the messaging, do you, you mean like the uh, positioning, the marketing messaging or like the SMS? Uh... The SMS side. Okay, so uh, a lot of the work yeah. that uh, GTC does is enabling companies to get into the SMS. So creating an SMS gateway uh, because they, they also play in the telco sphere. Uh, you know, there could be a voice provider that wants to add messaging sms especially what we call in the industry a to b sms uh, yeah. which is the application to person so they would set up advice advice how to set up the gateways how to, uh, to set up the system they also do network penetration tests to avoid fraud and to make sure that the network providers are not taking for a ride from the not well wishers in the yeah. industry so and and iot is the newest service that the company is offering. Uh, so they will be advising um, mobile operators and telcos uh, that have IoT services, they want to optimize them internally. And that is like how to set up the organization to uh, work with IoT, um, where they're missing people, how to find resources, or what it makes sense operationally. And also if they don't have IoT, you know, um, uh, help them connect the ecosystem. So we'll be coming to you, Nick, and say, hey, Nick, this company is getting into IoT. They need to partner in order to provide services. Right. So so we're going to get into all of that. And, and you know, back to our opening, I, I actually, I don't know how you do three jobs. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, and there, there's no way you have time to run a... Uh, uh, I tell you, I had my birthday on Sunday oh, and uh, this is the gift that my cat got me I don't know if you can see your, it your cat your did you say your cat got you a gift yeah yeah my cat got me a gift and it's the well, one those of us who aren't <laughs> watching this on video maybe you could describe what yes, your, so uh, your very talented my... cat managed to buy you <laughs> yes my cat is... which by the way is also my virtual assistant um I try to bring fun in my work 
uh, in well. every way that I can. So if somebody is booking a meeting with me, I use an AI uh, tool. I'm big right, in automation and tools. Yeah, they're very popular. So, yeah. And um, and I made my cat. So Bini, who is my cat's name, will send you a message and email. Say you you know this is the times the NASA is free, and I get a message from Bini telling me this person booked the meeting yeah, with I, you. I, I, hold on, I have to time out. You you, you I was following you. <laughs> I think you're you're saying you have a virtual assistant, which is named after your physical cat. No, I actually made my cat to put her to work. <laughs> no, no, you can't. A cat, a, a cat cannot work. Where, where no, are we going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. We, 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 we can embed sensors, right? <laughs> so it's a virtual. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but but anyway, let's get back. So yeah. you, you had your birthday and you were about to describe what your... Yeah, ah. so she got me this little pop hero um, and it's a figurine of Wonder Woman <laughs> to just sort of thank me for taking care of her and everything else that I do. So you asked me how to do everything. This is what my family thinks, including my cat. <laughs> Do you know, we have so many um, we have so many strange stories and good stories that pop out of these podcasts. I never know. We were talking before we uh, hit the record button. I, I never know where we're going to go. And there's always such great stories. And then we, when I talk to people afterwards, they often they often remember the stories more than they remember the content. But I guess that's why. Exactly. Like. So let's let's drag it back uh, away to IoT. That, uh, to <laughs> IoT. Well, actually, no, to you. Um, so. Um, we sort of know where you've ended up. And I want to talk about, about you know, you're advising people, you're, mm -hmm. you're chairing committees, you're, you're advising the operators, you're seeing what people's problems are with IoT. We're going to get into all of that. But but what about, how did you get into this? I mean, I mean, it's an interesting place you've ended up. You talked about more than 20 years in the industry and whatever. Yeah. But but what's what's uh, what's your story about how Nasia ended up uh, doing this? Doing IoT. Well, it's a, it's a personal, I would say, driver that got me into IoT per se, before I even knew that IoT existed many years ago. Um, I was still doing telco and messaging and voice, but at the time, uh, my late dad, he passed away last year, but he started to lose his memory. And um, he, he would disappear and would have to find out, you know, make sure that, you know, we didn't lose him for good. So in the back of my head, uh, I loving technology and loving gadgets. I have that a passion of mine, trying to test and find yes. new gadgets and all that. I was trying to figure out a way that will make his life easier and our life easier. It was a little bit selfish as well uh, from that perspective, because I didn't want to be here in London when my dad was in Greece and worry what, where he is and what he's doing, or my mom have the additional stress. And we're talking about many years ago now, we're talking about about eight to nine years ago, where the wearables for the elderly and, and, and they weren't as good as they are now, or they weren't even you know, on the foreground to have this yes. discussion. So I was talking to people and say, I want to find and I want to create a sensor or even a watch or something that it's not intrusive. So I know where my dad is at all times. I couldn't chip him. If I could, I would, <laughs> but I couldn't you know, get the time. Yeah. So that's where my interest is in IoT started from. Um, I started digging and understanding more because I knew about machine to machine. I just hadn't put together the human element. And that's where a lot of the challenges and the pains, that the problems that we're trying to solve. So it really came out of a problem that I had to solve uh, for my own family. So to ensure that we have peace of mind, knowing that my dad, when he leaves the house, if he loses his memory and he doesn't know where he's at, uh, we will be able to check on a phone or check on a screen and, and know that he's at that location, we can go find him. It, so, it, you know, I think you're the third guest on the podcast series who've actually got into IoT for that exact same reason. You're probably not aware, but the two other guests um, who both, uh, I think, were in the sort of care business um, uh, now actually took that and actually said, I'm going to solve that problem for that specific mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, sector. But but it, it is interesting how many people got into IoT because they saw the potential of the technology yeah. to solve problems and in particular health. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that struck me is when when you said about if I could chip him, I would, um, uh, but you couldn't. I remember about 10 years ago when I was back in my Cisco days, I uh, was giving a speech. I got asked a question, I think, and, and on stage, I think it was, and somebody said, you know, about implanting a chip. Mm -hmm. oh, I was traveling back and forth to America because I was doing a global role for Cisco based in the UK, and I was traveling back and forth every two weeks. I mean, literally back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, I just thought it was a pain in the butt, the passport. I didn't have global entry at that point. Mm -hmm. And I just said on stage, well, you know, look, at someone, I would hold my hand up and volunteer for a chip yeah. and you could put it behind my ear and you could put my passport on it. And it was before Apple Pay, you mm -hmm. know, and I could pay for things. You could have my medical records. If I found yeah. myself in a different country, you could have all my medical records. And, and people said, oh, no, nobody would ever do that. Nobody, why would you ever <laughs> do that privacy and whatever? And I said, well, it seems pretty crazy carrying a piece of paper called a passport around with you. I mean, it hasn't really yeah. changed in, in, in how many years? A couple of hundred or more, I guess um and um we're not there yet uh we're not implanting these things on a mass scale but with wearables we are getting a lot closer and i haven't used a credit card now physical piece of plastic for over two years because everything's on the phone exactly and you can do it with your watch and so i think we are we are getting there but as as we both know in telco and in uh, iot in particular progress is slow very it is always slower than you think mm -hmm. uh, you know, people you know we've been at this pre-iot it was m2m people say well pre-m2m it was scada yeah we've been at it for a long long time so you advise people uh operators uh i guess end users working committees um so let's see if we can get to some of the big issues uh, mm -hmm. that um uh that, that you uh, you see ongoing at the moment. Now you mentioned uh, if we can start, if, if we may, with um, uh, uh, MEF, the Mobile Ecosystem Forum. Mm -hmm. we have a series of meetings, and I think you. Uh, in fact, by the time this thing gets broadcast, I think this meeting will be over. But I think the next meeting that you have is on roaming, and right. yeah, maybe you could just describe why is roaming the subject, and what's your take on where we are right now? Mm -hmm. Because it's a big. It's a big it's issue an enormous. For podcasts, and it's a big issue for the industry and a lot of people yeah. uh, don't understand it don't think they need to understand it and then they suddenly have to when it comes to iot well uh it's 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 an enormous topic and it's one that uh it's not as broadly discussed if you're not within the industry and you're facing the pains um there was uh, based on what we do at meth a report that came out and the majority of the enterprises a big chunk of them they have no plans of changing this year next year what they're gonna do on the roaming side that immediately led me to think like, do they understand when they're deploying connected services, connected products that they don't stay stationary in one country, one area, and they have to roam that the connectivity that they use, um, you know, to transport the data from that connected device could be roaming in another country if that device uh, is, Absolutely. is, is especially if they want to make uh, and global SKUs single SKU manufacturer wants sell it sell around the world exactly the exactly are, uh, they're not like people like when I went to America I came back mm -hmm. so I could do short-term roaming when I uh, off Vodafone when I was in the mm -hmm. US but mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. products go to America and stay in America or go they to stay go for to a long period stay or go to Brazil and yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh when uh, Initially, as you know, when um, IoT products came out and we're using data connectivity, especially now we're talking about uh, uh, mobile data connectivity, um, uh, there wasn't even a, a, a different product that was called IoT data connectivity. Yes, that's you know, right. uh, device manufacturers would use any SIM with data and test the products. Then the operator saw, hmm, there's something to this um, with IoT. Let's create a product because it has to have different pricing and there is, is a lot more complicated and so on and so forth. And, and they created the IoT data specific connectivity sims that, um, that have been used for the connected devices. Now, if you're within a country, it's fine. But when you're roaming, 
it's it's very involved. And originally, there were no barriers. A device could roam uh, for yeah. uh, you know there was no time limit. There was no, then, no no one was looking at the data. No restrictions. I mean, yeah, exactly yeah. because we didn't have as many devices and it wasn't so yeah. much data consumed. People it wasn't on the forefront of the mind. However, now several countries, US included, they don't allow what is called permanent roaming so roaming in that particular country indefinitely they only allow you a short period till you switch to another service or you switch to a different network provider and so on and so forth and that is where the problems come for the enterprises themselves and creates additional complications for the network providers is because all of a sudden you know your device could stop working you lose connectivity so what do you do and, and that's a huge problem because something that you supposed as an enterprise that it will be connected is no longer. And unless you work with a, a provider who's looked at this and has made provisions that it doesn't matter if you're going to be in the UK or you're going to be in the US, you're going to continue getting the services as we explain them to you. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, we, it's a big thing. It, it, I always find it, I don't know what you think, Nasira. I, it's almost like it's the emperor's clothes you know in my experience and i've been um more than 30 years in the industry let me just uh, uh, leave it there i won't say how many how many more but quite a few more than 30 years but anyway i found in my career that oh, many times particularly when there's a trans a technology transition or an industry disruption or something there was something that was accepted as conventional wisdom that suddenly people said the emperor's got no clothes or yes, but, mm -hmm. and at first people say, oh, no, 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 don't worry about that. And then suddenly people saying, yeah, it is. And then suddenly whoosh, people say, I have to solve it. And to me, one of the core things on IoT is this roaming, which as you rightly say, most people, you know, obviously you're aware of what we do. We, 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 we solve that issue through distributed localization mm -hmm. uh, plus roaming. But, but the reason we built that is because when we said to people, well, what about roaming? And we're 14 year old, years old as a company, people would say, oh, I don't worry about that. The, my, when I talk to the operator, they don't tell me to worry about that. And, and, and yet, as you say, uh, it, it's, it's a second, 800 companies, they have roaming agreements with hundreds of others. So it's yeah. a many to many, mm -hmm. I don't know how many that combinations there is, factorial or whatever, but tens of thousands of roaming agreements. And if you go to these big shows like Mobile World Congress, there's a whole hall in uh, the European version in Barcelona with people. Mm -hmm. I was always amazed. It's like a dating agency. All, all these operators meeting each other on speed dating to agree roaming agreements. There's a whole yeah. industry and it's set on quotas mm -hmm. and, and, and the quotas can change and people's policies can change. And it's it just needs one person to say, oh, I'm a, you've exceeded your quota, and suddenly, bang! And we know, and users have no idea in advance. I mean, we've seen devices that have been issued with four-hour notification of termination of agreement. Four hours. He don't have well, enough time. What can you do in four hours? It takes days, if not months, to change and get anything with any of the operators. Unfortunately, keep going. You four hours is nothing. You have That's to switch it. the device, which is, yeah. let's say, $200. If you have 5,000 devices, 5,000 times $200. I mean, you can... So it, it one of the central pillars of IoT is the consumer, mo, uh, consumer voice roaming model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm doesn't scale and um and that that's a really big issue isn't it because um uh, the moment you say that it, it's not like that model is going to change because roaming agreements there's the financial component as well isn't there that whoever mm -hmm. takes the connection if they roam onto somebody else they give a, a small percentage of what they collect so data prices are coming down which means the pressure on accepting roaming is actually getting bigger and bigger and bigger so this is not like it's there's suddenly going to change and everyone's suddenly going to allow no. permanent roaming on everybody else. Quite the opposite. This is a huge issue, isn't it? It is 
and and there is a good reason i mean if we look at it from the operator perspective for one minute is uh for them having this um, a vast amount of devices on their networks utilizing their resources and taking so much of their resources um without you know they don't see much in terms of like payment per se so yeah. they about use they get, in it's the very they small get about 20 percent and if it's yeah. narrow band or whatever it's 20 percent of a cent mm -hmm. does mm -hmm. not pay for the dedicated infrastructure it does not pay about. for them to grow their infrastructure either because in the past two years because you know with what happened with uh COVID and everything it, their infrastructure we saw what happened you know they had to scramble around to grow and rebuild in many ways to allow us all to be connected and stay connected connected. So multiply that exponentially with IoT devices. The, um, uh, the resources that are needed to support the uh, IoT infrastructure, the IoT connected devices is immense and it costs a lot. So if you're an operator and you're looking at it, you're like, I'm going to take care of my own first. Uh, yes. Because this is what I'm going to see my return on investment the fastest, and then I'm going to deal with everything else. Uh, and as you well said, is um, the the prices when it comes to connectivity are getting lower. It, 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 it's been commoditized. It's a commodity now. Yep. When we're talking about connectivity, from now I'm switching back to the enterprise side of things. When I'm as an enterprise, I will be looking and say, I want my device to work. I don't care, you know, how it works. I shouldn't. I should understand a bit more, but I want you, Mr. IoT provider or Mrs. IoT provider, to help me get my device working. And so for me, it's a feature that you need to offer me, the connectivity, yeah. Yeah, along with everything else. Ubiquitous and not let me worry about it. And, and regular um, listeners to this podcast um, will have heard me talk about our philosophy, which we know is different and, and it actually... It, it, we haven't found anybody else who has approached this because we've always said from day one, it isn't going to work. Uh, and I just think it's inevitable. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it, it, the things that we talked about are only going to get worse. The, the, the amount of money being shared is lower. The infrastructure costs are higher. People costs are higher to run the infrastructure. The roaming agreements will break more and more and more. Mm -hmm. It's a house of cards. So we, we, we like to call our, what we have, just to explain it in the context and also a little bit of shameless advertising, of course, but is, is basically like a star alliance model where we said, look, it's never going to work. So what if we could just um, federate, distribute the connectivity from a single SIM, but, but distribute it in a way where it localizes on as many networks as possible. So you solve mm -hmm. the problem with the operators and then you use roaming as infill. And then if you have your own uh, SMSR or, or the, the remote SIM provisioning capability abstracted and being agnostic in the cloud, mm -hmm. you can actually provide it as a feature, as you say, and the operators are then getting um, uh, uh, localized connections and not through their roaming agreements. So they're very, very happy. And the user is, is, not, is getting less risk on deployment because you're not getting it kicked off because you're localizing. But that's a very different architectural model. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we believe it's the only model that can work, the sort of Star Alliance type model, uh, because there's a lot of people saying, oh, don't worry, we, we can do roaming and with eSIMs, we can change the profile. Um, but but you've got this underlying, um, it feels like eggshells or a house of cards or whatever. All these roaming agreements, tens and tens of thousands of roaming agreements, which at any time can go into, oh no, we've exceeded the quota, you need to move. It's very much built from the industry out, isn't it? It's mm -hmm, not built mm -hmm. from the enterprise in. And so I, uh, roaming, I can see why this is your big subject. Can, if I can move uh, for, for MEF um, mm -hmm. uh, and for the operators, and it's something the industry has to solve in order to enable interoperability for the user. Can I move to another area? Um, because I think that in part of your work, and I don't know which one of the three companies but you talk about working with operators um what about the another um emperor's clothes issue if you like um which um is uh i think people we think and i want to be interested in your view people have not even thought about we talked about roaming and it's education what do you mean mm -hmm. roaming and we spend a lot of time educating and another big area where we spend time educating is hardware so yes. what we find is that people say to us, oh, I just need a SIM. 
and we say, well, we like, I'd like to see a device. What's the, what's the modem? What's the firmware settings? Uh, what's the interaction between the modem and the, and the, um, and the uh, SIM? Uh, how do we do battery life management? Uh, I, and they say, no, 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 no. I, it's, I just need a SIM because I just want to put the SIM in the device. And, and we, we always say, no, 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 it doesn't work like that in IoT. It's much more complicated than putting a SIM in a device. Do you see the subject of, and most people thought that we'd seen the back of hardware because now with cloud, the applications are in the cloud mm -hmm. and you just don't have, they know nothing about hardware. They don't want to know anything about hardware. Like they don't want to know anything about roaming. <laughs> What's your view on this subject? Does that come up as well? Uh, it comes up, especially uh, not so much, you know, on the connectivity side of things, but more on the security side of things, when, which I think those two are very much related, yes. really. So um, uh, I've had talks from the hardware vendors and also companies who need hardware. So I've seen it from both sides of, um, of the story, if you wish. So uh, the hardware vendors, the ones who make the actual uh, sensors, uh, yeah. they uh, struggle to understand from their perspective that they need to engage on the connectivity right. side and the yeah. other uh, yeah. elements of the IoT ecosystem early on because they're all connected and interrelated and they That's have right. to work and function very well together in order to provide That's you know right. the added element of security at the same time because we had that there is no you know standards or regulations as of yet or the ones that are adhered on we have a lot of older devices that don't adhere to what we now would call standards um and and the firmware are not updated uh, the security element is, uh, uh, I would say, very, very weak. And uh, those are the devices that create the risk with the millions of devices that are IoT devices. There's many devices that are not secure. They don't have the right connectivity and they don't have the right security. So there is a, um, a, a lot of education, like you mentioned, that needs to happen on the hardware side of things, both for those who make the hardware, but also those who who use and buy and use the hardware. Yeah. So and, 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 and I think if I I think what you've you've raised there is two separate issues and they're both yeah. really important. I could like to deal with each of them individually if if I may. One of the first points you made there was um uh the hardware is really important when it comes to um uh IoT and the hardware, the people who make the sensors or make the mod, I guess the modules as well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, modems slash modules, they need to actually do more uh, uh, to think about the connectivity up front as opposed to saying, well, I just make it, it goes down the line, the supply chain, somebody else thinks about the connectivity because what we find, you know, we bought a hardware company uh, specifically when we get engaged in hardware and every one of our, our customers that we have. It's one of the most valuable things that we do, actually. But what we basically then have to go back to say, well, uh, let me let me yeah. look at your firmware settings in your modem. Yeah. Well, you need to do that. And it's because the industry isn't engaging with it uh, um, uh, up front. Now, of course, with iSIM, and um, that we're in discussions with several companies around around this, but with iSIM, that there is hope on the horizon um, in that if, because the SIM will eventually disappear, physical mm -hmm. SIM, and it will become... Uh, firmware inside the circuitry, the silicon layer of either the chipset or the module. At that point, you 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 will get pre-integration of connectivity capabilities yeah. being produced by the um, supply chain, either at the chipset and or at the module level. Mm -hmm. So I think the industry will get there with ISIM, but you but as of right now, none of the module guys really worry about the connectivity because they just say, "Look, I'm in the business to sell." modules i'm not in the business to solve connectivity so i think the industry i'm hoping the the isim issue solves that but you also mentioned security mm -hmm. and the the challenge of course with security well it's huge multiple challenges with security. <laughs> <laughs> what a subject but um definitely the threat uh surface is exponentially growing so it, it's a huge issue and there are billions of attacks on iot devices um people uh lose incredible data they lose their jobs but but it's interesting isn't it that, that the traditional way we in the it industry 
one of the ways we in the IT industry have solved that is by putting an agent of some sort on the device. I mean, if you have a, a Microsoft PC, you know mm -hmm. what it is. If you have an iPhone, you know what it is. You know the target architecture. So you can create an agent that goes on that target architecture because it's fixed. The problem with IoT devices is the proliferation. Yeah. Thank and you. so the concept of designing an agent mm -hmm. for everybody's devices is just physically impossible. It, yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's you know, I have to use like AI uh, anomaly detection behavior techniques because you can't create specific software for the device. Yeah, and the security historically, when we look at it, uh, it was the responsibility of IT, right? And when we're talking about IoT, you've got the operational yeah. side. And before a company wouldn't think of dealing with security on the operational layer, it was just, let me secure Good my point. border, let yeah. me secure my devices. But you know what, IoT is IT and OT built together. I mean, um, I'm saying yeah. something that everybody knows, but the, when we're looking at security, the security has to be looked at it more holistically and more broader and not as siloed anymore. We talk a lot about securing by design. And what that means is like from the inception when a hardware device is you know, built all the way through the whole ecosystem, because when we're designing an IoT system, we look at the entire stack. So you can just secure by design the device. You have to secure by design all the elements. And that also I would add, I would say connectivity by design. And yes. I would say, you know, all kinds of things. Every, everything, is, everything has to be brought forward, like yeah. built in built in as opposed to added on is what you're saying. And that's where a lot of the problems that we're having and challenges that we're having within the industry are coming from today is because if, uh, things are being retrofitted. Everything is an afterthought instead of looking and, and taking care of it from the beginning. Even if we, okay, I'm going to put a little bit side note there. It's impossible to capture everything. You're always going to have to make some changes in the future and make you know yeah. different iterations. But the more we spend time thinking of the design and understanding what we're building across the ecosystem, the easier our life will become when we deploy and we're trying to uh, accelerate the growth within IoT. So um, security is immense, and everybody. I mean, one of the um, it's top of mind for for companies for enterprises wanted to adopt IoT is just what they're looking for is uh, based on a research that MEF did uh, uh, last year for to over 475 enterprises is they're looking for somebody and security was on the top 10. But the, the, non-surprisingly, to, to me at least, it wasn't a surprise that they're looking for somebody that can help them accommodate the entire end-to-end uh, deployment of IoT, and this is there is a good reason for that is because they don't have the internal know how, they might not have the time. So and also they want to ensure that the device element is there and is taking care. Somebody understands and working with the connectivity providers, and they're working and collaborating together, working with the platform and the analytics and so on and so forth. And that was the, one of the biggest things we're looking for end-to-end -end managed services when it comes to IoT. And, and, and that's probably the third and, and, and probably final big subject that we've got time for on this podcast, which um, is this idea of IoT is not a DIY, DIY set of components in the way that people think it is. And um, it, you actually need a partner that can take you from the idea through to implementation. Mm -hmm and be your guide. I mean, <laughs> that's why I always explain to people, why have you got that strange balloon for those of you watching? Why have you got that balloon behind your head? <laughs> Do you like balloons? <clears throat> no, well, uh, yeah, but um, uh, the idea, at least our branding, is you need a someone who understands all these issues to be your guide. So the idea mm -hmm. of a guide on a balloon, lots of images around guiding and giving advice, trusted advisor. And, and so you have to have a professional services capability, you have to have a hardware design capability, you have to have a connectivity mm -hmm. capability, you have to be agnostic, and it's right the way through to implementation. It reminds me of, um, um, I always on these podcasts end up talking about, well, when, back in the day, uh, <laughs> it reminds me of back in the day, you know, I mean, uh, 
the IT industry in the, frankly the 80s and the 90s was components and the and the and and the, the people who the system integrators and the value added resellers and the people who aggregated it all together and and made it happen and yeah the big companies did a lot themselves but then they found that they were recruiting so many people as the amount of technology um, uh, increased exponentially and all the solutions weren't designed to interact with each other and then ultimately you got cloud where where people say well I, let me i'll just take care of it and i'll sell you a service and i think iot has to go that route because it is so complicated yes you need an advisor you need to tell people stop i, I know you want to uh, 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 buy devices put sims in them and deploy them but you these are the reasons why it's not going to work the, the security, the hardware, the firmware, the, mm -hmm. the connectivity. And it, it's a strange sales process because you spend the first uh, hour of the meeting telling people, these are all the problems you're going to um, uh, face. And, and people often say, well, other companies I talk to just tell me <laughs> it's a sim and, and this is the price of data and, you know, click here and it'll arrive tomorrow morning. And they say, yeah, but... <laughs> But you do realize it won't work because these are industry issues. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we're taking an industry that wasn't designed for IoT. It was designed for consumer, but you mentioned SMS. And mm -hmm. It was designed for consumer voice. And roaming was designed for people who went abroad and came back again pretty, pretty shortly. And hardware was, you know, sort of designed by hardware companies. And the, and the iPhones, the phones were designed by phone companies. And all the certification and the tight coupling of the hardware software was done. In IoT, it's not like that. It, it's a series of, it's like buying cars with where uh, uh, components arrive from multiple companies and are dumped on your driveway. <laughs> like a kid car. <laughs> yeah, a kid car. You have to put it together yourself. You have to put it together yourselves. And, 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 and actually, then you suddenly realize after a while, why did I do this? Uh, but that is where we are. I think there is hope. I think uh, global... Uh, operator ag agnostic switching is key. EUICC mm -hmm. is a standard mm -hmm. is, is key. Um, uh, iSIM is ultimately going to uh, make the uh, uh, hardware thing. As you say, it has to drop down to the silicon layer. It has yeah. to. And then on the security side, the idea of agent, well, certainly we believe agentless security. We partnered with, Armis, who I believe are the leading company uh, in, in the Gartner MQ Magic Quadrant, but the idea of there's so many different hardware proliferations that that you have to use AI tools to look at behavior and spot anomaly behavior. Mm -hmm. You can't put a piece of software on; it's one component of the design of services. But the idea of monitoring uh, and, and saying unusual behavior uh, because you just can't say. His piece, his a his a software update like Symantec does, deploy it to my IoT devices because they've all got different operating systems, firmware, mm -hmm. modems, chips, sensors. It's very fragmented, isn't it? It's, Extremely, it's, uh, and yeah. and I think keeps us all busy. <laughs> very much so, and uh, <laughs> I think the 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 whole ecosystem is getting closer, but it's still fragmented and siloed, uh, irrespective of which layer we're looking at. Um, and, you know, to use my cliches, and I love my cliches, it's like one size doesn't fit all. It's especially true with uh, IoT. Uh, but it's also very important is the partnerships, because um, it, we're looking historically, at least on the telco industry, and it's been changing with uh, when, when we're getting into CPaaS and Omnichannel. But historically, it's like, oh, we're working together. We sign roaming agreements, but we're also competing for the same customer the same minute, the same uh, SMS message, and, and now the same data and selling SIMs, right? But for IoT, it's not the competition, really. It's like working together to provide an ecosystem to build it, because there isn't one company, uh, you know, even if you look at the big hyperscalers, they don't own all the elements. It's the partnerships that really that That's they're right. selling to the customer. Yeah. So yeah. it's through those partnerships and putting these elements together um, uh, to ensure that the customer is getting that one size you know, fits all for the particular yes. or the end-to-end -end interaction because the customer, the end user, they just want their device. They just want their cog, whatever that is, yes. to work. 
Yeah, they don't want to have to They want worry. the data, they want the business outcome, and they want to, you know, and uh, they want, and the final comment, what they, they want the ability to turn products into experiences um, and to, by using data, to create new experiences. And they want to um, not be disrupted uh, by people um, uh, who get there ahead of them. I mean, a lot of the case studies that we talk about are, are the people who have made it through the maze mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of handholding, but but they have created amazing vending machines. Uh, they've created amazing medical devices. Uh, they've done amazing thing with with smart meters. They've uh, amazing um, uh, tracking devices. But when you do get through, you actually they gain market share. I mean, you know, everything that has power will be connected. Mm -hmm. it, it's not like it's not a debate. It, it's no. it's not a it's not an if. It's a when. It's inevitable. Um, it's inevitable. And I think the, the part of the business that you're in, the part of the business that we're in, and as you rightly say, and everybody else, we, we need to work together more. So we just say, you know what? We're going to work together as an ecosystem. And we're just going to, we're going to do this and, and we'll handle all that complexity between ourselves. Mm -hmm. but, but we've for too many years exposed the complex, complexity yeah. and the proprietary silos and the, uh, components to uh, the industry and and it, um, and as a result of which IoT adoption has been held back. I mean, we've been talking about this for for a long time. A long I mean, time. It, we haven't lived up to the hype, but there is a good reason for that. I personally believe is because ourselves we didn't know where it's going to go. We yeah. were testing the waters per se, yeah. and uh, uh, and part of what we're doing as an industry is to keep educating. I mean, a lot of what I do is providing right. this education. You built a career around it. Um, so it's, it's necessary. Instead of, the, instead of the karate school, you've actually found that this is a exactly. It's an IoT school instead. <laughs> It's, I don't think you're ever going to get to do that. I mean, you are, there's such a demand and, and there is, and there is enormous hope because the, the people are some amazing, that's why we produce IoT Leaders yeah. podcast uh, to highlight the issues, but also to highlight the successes. So we have about mm -hmm. 50 on, in terms of podcasts of people who uh, are one of the issues like this, but also yeah. education, but also about 50% of the podcasts are people who have, taken handholding they've taken a service um, yeah they're all our customers of course it's our podcast but um and they've actually implemented amazing things and you know we they are they are really doing well every every person we bring on board they want to talk about it because they're doing so well um, it, um but we're just i think in jeffrey moore parlance we, we feel like we're just crossing the chasm now it, yeah. it feels like the early days of open sit to me open systems or the early days of cloud or the early days of mobile phones it mm. feels like uh, it, it's just it's starting to move and and covid has helped because it's put a focus on yeah. cost reduction and and uh, getting more revenue differentiating products and yeah. so downturns bizarrely help technology adoption curves don't they very much so. Uh, I, I think, like you said, we, we had to wait for the hype to die down. So something else came and become hype. Nowadays, we, we're talking about a lot about the metaverse. But us at the uh, IoT world, we know that we've We've been there with digital twins and we can, you know, imagine what can happen when you take digital twins to the metaverse and, and all this different conversation for a different I'm gonna, time. I did a podcast with the global <laughs> leader of IoT um, uh, from Microsoft on digital twins and the metaverse. That's a whole new subject um, yeah. uh, on a different point on the hype cycle. Let exactly. Um, let's solve, we want to solve some basic issues first. Um, around devices and connectivity and, and, and getting customers deployed and uh, producing uh, IoT devices that just work when you switch them on. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then I think um, uh, maybe at some point um, uh, uh, you'll be uh, running a fourth, a fourth company, which is a, <laughs> the, the, the Metaverse Digital Twin Company or something. You, know, who knows? you never know. <laughs> You're always you never know what happens. Yeah. You know, I, I, I always, I, one thing that I don't want is to uh, wake up one morning and say, what if? <laughs> I try yeah. to avoid that. No, well, I think your um, your virtual assistant, your cat, 
say the, Dob what, said, right? <laughs> yeah. What did you say the name of the cat? The cat? Binny. 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 I think Binny's going to be very, very busy uh, because there's huge demand for your services. <laughs> Um, and uh, this is an area that's going to keep us all busy uh, for uh, quite a long time. So, listen, let's leave it there. We could talk for a long, long time. Very much um, so. But uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for sharing uh, a lot of uh, information with us, a lot of thoughts, a lot of background, your personal story, and um, a really practical view, I think, on where we are, yeah. and what we need to do to actually uh, deliver on uh, the roadmap for IoT. So, I just want to thank thank you um, uh, for this, Nasia. Thanks for agreeing to be a guest on IoT um, Leaders Podcast. So for our listeners and viewers, uh, thank you for listening to this episode uh, with me, your host, Nicole, the CEO of uh, SI. And um, you can find a lot, a lot of our, uh, all the previous podcasts, a lot of the information that we talked about is all on our website at si.com, which, quick advertorial, has recently had a, this week, in fact, a, uh, as we're recording this, a major revamp um, around a new offering called Infinity, which uh, I'll just leave it there. But uh, the SI um, uh, website has uh, been just completely revamped with a lot of content, videos, tutorials, help, case studies around uh, uh, many of the issues that we've talked about on this episode and indeed the previous ones and I'm sure the future ones. So again, Nasia, thank you uh, very much for uh, being my pleasure Nick we'll be working together a lot going forward and thank you to our listeners and I look forward to talking to you again on the next episode thank you 